Nick speaking and this is just a, a quick video really uh, I got a couple of requests on how I actually magnetise my wave serpents now I did do a video about things to do before you glue and you can see the magnets and a bit of basic stuff on there but um, I thought I'd just go into it a bit further slightly closer look at just the magnetising bits now ideally it's best to look at these before you build the serpent but I shall try my best so first of all you've the gun at the front here shuriken cannon, shuriken um, catapult <clears throat> what I did was underneath um, inside the tank I put I glued a small piece of flat plastic I got from my bits box um, onto that and then I glued the magnet actually inside there um, if you want to find out which magnets I used and where I got them from you can just have a look on my blog and uh, you can find the link below and if you go on to there you'll be able to uh, see and um, there's some links actually where I got the magnets from and which ones I used so that's the first magnet and to go with that would be the shuriken catapult and what I did I actually filed out um, a hole in here and put one magnet that side and one magnet that side with two magnets each side of that and uh, that just basically goes in so it would still move in there and would then obviously click into there like so and then I can interchange that I can take that out and again well this is the forge weld one but I just fired out the hole, make it big enough to put two magnets in and so that it will go in and magnetise with that piece. Now ideally it'd be, you could just have like two of these and just glue them in, you don't have to file and magnetise them but um, they're quite difficult to get hold of these bits, I, did, I have managed to get a few extras uh, since I made this one but this particular one is just a, a dual one so that's that. Um, my star engines are magnetised, I've got the magnet just in there and the star engine itself again a forge weld one just a magnet in there and they just go on like so the vectored engines which I've got again forge weld ones they don't actually need to be magnetised because they quite easily they just slide in so it's quite useful really because all you do is that so you can have it with the vectored engines or without quite simply just by doing that. Uh, in terms of the turret itself, again underneath, I'll try and have show you, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Um, there you go, there's, there's a piece of plastic at the top, again a, a flat piece that I got from my bits box, I think it's an old rhino door or something. Um, I just put that in there and then I glued the magnets down on the top and then on this plate uh, just glued the magnet on there. It's difficult to see sometimes in this light. There you go. And then that just uh, that just glues into place. That sorry magnetizes into place. Then on the top here, I just cut off the piece that was sticking out and put the magnet in its place. Then on the turret, again just underneath there, there's a little magnet in there, and that just goes on like so. Then these two pieces here they had like little sticky out things where you'd normally just push the gun on but I cut those off and I put two magnets on one both side, one each side and then the gun itself I've got a a magnet just there so it literally just just pops on like so and on the other side of the gun is another magnet and a magnet just uh, on the end there so that you can do that so again as you don't get hundreds of these you, you just use one and if you have a different gun in the future you can you go got my bright lance um, with the magnet on again exactly the same idea so you can just interchange those pieces which is quite useful now what I have found though with these is with the bigger guns like the bright lance sometimes even with the undercoat of paint on and stuff sometimes they do flop down because it's quite a big gun, and it's just one of a small magnet area. Even if you have quite a powerful magnet, it's, they do tend to still move. And when I was building my Vulcan, uh, I did notice actually that the gun on the side, even after painted, actually fits in quite well. 
So on my next wave seven, I didn't actually magnetise that section. I've just uh, left it as it was originally, and if you can get it so you've got just the amount, right amount of paint on it, um, and once it's all varnished and everything, in actual fact you can get it to go in and stay into place, which is very useful, especially for the the bigger guns. So that's what I'm going to do for the the rest of my my ones. Obviously, still magnetise this piece on, but uh, not not the actual gun. So I'm probably going to do that for the rest of my serpents. Don't think there's any other magnets on here. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I am going to. Um, I'm going to come up with an idea to try and make each wave serpent um, different. Because I like to paint all of my stuff exactly the same. Uh, so I came up with an idea, as, as opposed to painting them different for di different units that are inside, is you get um, a little crystalline thing, I, I don't even know what it's called, but there's something in the box uh, which you can stick on. I think it might have been the old target array or something. And I was thinking of uh, just opening up the hatch and then sticking a magnet up inside here and then getting the target array, just sticking it or gluing it, magnetising it um, onto here and then all I have to do is uh, paint it so if it's fire dragon so now I'm painting fire dragon colours, dire avenger colours etc so that each wave serpent can look exactly the same but each one will actually be marked by this magnetised thing and be quite useful as well because when the unit gets out you can take that off and then if a different unit gets in you can just put the different um, indicator on there so that's one of my plans Okay, that's it then. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was useful to you. As I said, it is probably uh, more beneficial to do the to show you, you know, before I've actually built it. But hopefully you get the basic idea on that one. Oh, the last thing actually, um, this section with the base. I just quickly get a base. Okay, now normally um, on my jet bikes and vipers I've just cut this piece off and glue a magnet on the top and I have seen these wave servers and stuff magnetised before but what I did is I basically got my file and I made this hole bigger and I did actually angle it slightly and because this is, uh, this is tapered when you put it into the holes it goes in and as you push it in it gets quite stiff and actually it, you know, it locks into place quite well so that you can actually put it in, it all weighs up fine, it works fine for fire prisms, even the old ones with the big heavy uh, metal crystals on. And if you do get a mobiliser you can easily take it out and put it down for a mobilisation result. So that's the other thing as well. Okay, thanks for watching.